I want to thank you for being with us right now. Today we have an extraordinary interview that you cannot afford to miss. Many of us can never forget exactly where we were when we heard of the horrific Hamas attack on October 7th. We have not only survivors, but two people that are truly heroes. And today, you can be a part of God's bigger plan. I want to welcome with, with us Dr. Iftak Gepner. So good to have you with us and his beautiful wife. And we'll have your children today too. Mikhail Gepner, such an honor to have you both. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, we're going to get in this interview because I think it's so no one can tell this better than you. And for you to have supernaturally caught the last flight out of Israel to be with us right now, I believe is part of Hashem's plan. And so I want us to take a look at this video footage just before we talk to the Gepners. On the morning of the 7th of October at 6.30, something changed. We were used to attacks, but not like this. <laughs> it's about to... That's a rocket from a helicopter. A lot of terrorists broke the gates and got in Israel. And came to, to kill and to rape and to destroy and they succeeded. Wake up people, like it's still not over. So they shot that open. They shot that open and then they came into the house. And we have to eliminate this horrible terror. I just want my life back. I want to take this time now to share just a heartfelt story of the Gepners and so many people in Israel. Dr. Gepner, tell us the importance of your Moshav. Now, a lot of people in America say, what is that? <laughs> it's a village. And what is its importance to Israel? So our Moshav in Absor is located three miles away from Gaza Strip. Mm -hmm. And it's one of the largest Moshav in, in the Shkol region, the region that got a, a massive attack on October 7. 250 people were murdered that morning. So take us back to that horrific day of October 7th. I, I cannot even begin to imagine. How did it begin? What happened? So it was supposed to be a very beautiful and quiet Saturday morning. We had a plane go jogging, had a breakfast with the family, but it all changed. 6.30 in the morning and we wake up with a massive record attack, it was bombing all over, smoking and crazy noise all around. We wake up the kids, we put them in a safe room, you know, in Israel, every house have a safe room because we used to have this bombing in the past 22 years. It's not something new, but to be so massive, it's something that never had been before. And in that morning, something changed. It will never be the same again. The chief of commander tell us they're invading to Israel. And I must be clear here, it's not only 3,000 Hamas terrorists that are invading to other country, it's also the 6,000 civilians that came to kill, to rape, to burn, and to do those unhumanity things. I went to the gate and my brother was there, the only one with the rifle. And, and, and I took a place in, in, in the fence just to see whatever I can. I didn't have any weapon with me, so I took a rock. That's the only thing I have in my hands. And, and, and when they came about an hour later, my brother was the only one fighting with them, with about tens of them, and with his rifle. And thanks God, he stopped them. He got shot in his shoulder, he got shot. And he gave me a call to pick him up to the hospital. And on the way there, we all met. I mean, we got under attack of, of another tense and, and they started shooting on us with, with my private car, with the short pants, with the, my shoes, no socks. They started massive shooting. My brother was screaming from another several bullets that hit his hip and his belly and, and, and we were driving reverse and their, their motorcycle. It's like, it was a nightmare. Mm. It was a nightmare. And all this time, I, I, my wife, Michal, and my three kids are, are alone in the shelter. It had to be a miracle of God, because I heard that the gate shut right before they got in, 
and they had shot your brother, then you got him in the car, shot again, right? I heard you were driving backwards at uh, just crazy. I mean, I can't even imagine. And you couldn't get down the road because they were killing so many people. So you had to go back into where you were. How long did that last? So just this part lasts about 20, 25 minutes. This first part when he got shot in two different places. And luckily, thanks God, there was an ambulance. Coincidentally, without that, he wouldn't survive because he lost so much blood. And it took us about two hours to go to the ER, escape room from different pickups and, and, and motorcycles. And you know, nobody ever imagined that they will, we will be surrounded from Hamas terrorists that yeah. are coming over. Yeah. They had a pure aid in their eyes. I saw them in my eyes when they were trying to kill us. It was a miracle because no one died in, in your village. The biggest village, no one, the, the only village they came in and nobody either got kidnapped or killed. That, that is a very much a miracle. And uh, Mikkel, how, yes. you, you were down with the children and the children were in the safe house in the bomb shelter. Americans have a hard time even understanding that. Uh, they know what it is in parts of our world to our nation to go down into a, a basement because a tornado or something's coming, not because bombs are flying over them and there's this potential of being killed or no one would have ever thought raped and the horrific, horrific things that Hamas, the inhumane, it's not even human. What they did was so so sick and disgusting that every person should be outraged. And I believe that every person that hears this is going to stand with your village and with Israel um, in prayer and giving and in every way that they can. As a mother, what, what was going on? What did you feel? What were you thinking? As a mom, I was with Ruth, Ella, and Alon, and also with my neighbor and her daughter. Mm -hmm. And after 27 hours in the safety room, I realized that after seven minutes, they lost their seven years of their childhood. Mm -hmm. So I can't imagine or tell you how it's feel like my daughter's text, their friend text them from Kibbutz Nir Oz and Beri and told them, you have to save us, someone, and, and they're shot. And, and they told me, how can, how can they get survive? And I said, they will, of course. But it was, that moment broke my heart because I don't, they never have it, the, the right answer. You know, my parents always told me, you don't have nothing to worry about. And now I said, how can I tell them mm -hmm. this sentence? So we pray, and I say we have to pray because I believe they will be, they will be good. But then I realized it's much more than what we're thinking about. So I wasn't afraid, and I, I was wondering what's going up with Iftah and his brother. But I know, okay, they're not in Enapso anymore, so they're safe. But then we realized that the picture is much more bigger than what you were thinking about. When did you realize that? When did you realize this was not just another uh, going into the bomb shelter? So we start to get messages about my cousin that had been killed. Oh. And the music teacher and alone basketball coach. And it's never ending. And after every five minutes, we get another. And we know all of them. By, by names, by we saw their face, um, and there is nothing that can, you know, make you prepare this, be ready for this moment. Yeah. And just I want to tell them, okay, you're gonna be safe, you're gonna be okay. They they were they are brave. I can learn from them. The one thing that that I pray we can learn is your resilience and your joy. I, I've never seen a people that have so much character with resilience and truly choose joy. Choose it. Absolutely. You know, um, my grandma and grandpa survived the Holocaust. Mm. And, and 
against any chance they made the country of Israel. And my father, our, our parents, make our, our beautiful area from, from sand to become to be the granary of Israel. We will do it again. It's yes, our shift. They not even a question. We are not together. And there is only one way we're going through. We're going to win the war yes. and make the country even better than how it was before October 7. Amen. I tell everyone, and I say to you right now, make sure you always stand on the right side of God and the right side of history. And that is to stand with Israel. I'll be right back. I want you to hear from the Gepner children. Right now, I want to talk to the Gepner children, Ella and Elan, that were involved in that horrific Hamas attack on October 7th. We will never forget. We will never allow people to forget. Ella and Elan, you were in the safe house with your mom in the bomb shelter. Uh, what was that like? What was going on? At first, my dad woke me up, us. He woke us up. He said, come on, there are some bombs. Let's go in the shelter. Per usual, we have this every month, almost every month. So we go in the shelter. Dad says bye. He leaves the house. I never see him like until two weeks later. Two weeks? He told us that he's going to go um, look for the dog because he was scared. The dog was scared, so it ran off. So he said, I'm going to go look for the dog. and. Little did we know. My goodness, what did that feel like not knowing? I, because were you able to communicate with them? No. 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 We couldn't. I knew by a text from my friend. Yeah, me too. He texted me. He said, um, Ella, your whole Tesla is ruined. It's full of gun holes, gunshots. So you it's still didn't know the state of your father, though? No. I didn't know who blood that was, I didn't know who was. And also in the car, I just knew my dad went with the Tesla in the morning, so I thought that it was his blood. Alon, what was, what was happening with you? Uh, like Ella, my dad, he told us like to go to the safe room because like bombing and everything. When I, when the first thing I knowed that my friends from the class um, messaged me like I we have a terrorist in in my house, and then another friend messaged me like mm -hmm. uh, his best friend got like a good friend for a good friend for me uh, got shot in the, in the leg. A friend in my basketball team. He was ki he is kidnapped. Were you scared you'd never see him again? Yeah, I didn't see him for now. Yeah, he moved. You you all had to move for a while. You got displaced yeah, we people. Yeah, lot. People don't talk about that. They think about just the horrificness that caused all this. But you were displaced immediately. We were in a lot for three months. And you've never, you've never been, I mean, your village is your village. Your parents, your grandparents. Yes, everyone's together, and then, like, everyone split up. And, yeah. So they were found out about it, yeah. So I found out um, we were in the safe room, and my friends from Niroz and Berry, they, the, they kept calling me. I didn't want to be on my phone after I heard mm. about my dad. Um, so I call my friend and I'm like, hey, how are you? What's going on from Niroz? Um, she started whispering and I'm like, why is Yagil, my friend, why is he not answering my phone calls or texts? She said, Yagil is not with us. Yeah. They kidnapped him. Him and his brother, they were alone in the house. She said, they're outside my house, I need to go. And then she hung up. And then later on, I found out by my other two friends from Berry, they were kidnapped too. It, I cannot understand um, how anyone hearing your story 
cannot be absolutely outraged. Uh, what Hamas did is they're, they're, they're destructive, they're terrorists, it's inhumane, it's beyond animalistic. It is, it is, I can't even imagine. I've been able to meet with uh, your Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, since um, we've been able to activate churches around the world to pray for you and, and help, Thank you. help in some Thank you so small much. way. You can, never, you can never take something back to before, but yeah. the very least we can do is we know that when you bless Israel, God blesses us mm -hmm. and that it is God's homeland. It is, it's all of our homelands. Yes, um, and so it's, it's just the heartfelt thing, the smallest thing we can do to make your village, your home, as good as possible. Thank you. So I really pray everyone feels what I feel here and stands behind this in every way they can. Thank you. You guys are pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. You must have some great parents and a great family. Yes, we have great parents. Yes, you do. And a great family. So my friends, she Can has... Can I say one more thing? Anything you want to say. After my mom got a call that my basketball coach died, and after the October 7th, I see uh, five friends from Niroz. One of one of them like he, his house burned and like every one of them the their house burned and one of them a lot of his family like kidnapped his dad and two of him uncles. One friend like he saw him in the leg like the shoot and he couldn't like walk on the line. I'm sorry. Can't imagine you going through that. Just a young boy growing up, having fun in your village, playing basketball. Were you good at basketball? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry you lost your coach. We have family, friends, my parents. My friend, she had to come back from Gaza after she was kidnapped. To find out, to find out that her mom is dead, and two weeks after, she found out that her dad is dead too. Oh, how old was she? She's my age. Fourteen years old. Fourteen. And my other friend, his dad is killed too. They're all. They were all in Gaza. Thank you for being so brave to share your story. The world needs to hear it, so they understand. It's not, not the not sound over. bites. Not the. Uh, sometimes crazy news and media, but to understand the truth. It's not over. They still need to come back. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. You guys are heroes. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you. Right now, we're here with Dr. Gepner and Pastor Todd Lamphere. Of course, many of you know Pastor Todd. He's been to Israel so many times and all over the world on behalf of Paula White Ministry and CityServe. And let's talk about what are we doing? Where are we right now? How do we come together to rebuild? You know, Pastor, first of all, thank you for Paula White Ministry and Paula White Ministry Partners for the way that they have just stepped up and have helped us in En Abzur. Uh, which is uh, an amazing biblical town found in 1 Samuel chapter 30. Yeah. And they're really living up to their heritage uh, in that whole Estrel Valley. And when, uh, when we were called upon uh, through Paul White Ministries and City Serve to, to come and to help, we, we really honed in on, on this particular yeah. region here. Uh, you know, four rifles in Iraq uh, warded off uh, Hamas terrorists. I mean, it's... It's, it's, just, a, it's supernatural. It's, it, it, if you've ever wondered about the, the mighty hand of God, just go to En Abzur and you'll be able to see how God miraculously spared them, but he spared them for a purpose. And we really sensed that uh, from, from the beginning. And we wanted to invest in them because they had the heart and the desire to invest in that whole region. Mm -hmm. Now this is a Moshav of 1,200 residents, 500 of which are children who are school age and below. It literally is a community of kids. Yeah. 
and the the trauma that they went went through 24 plus hours in their safe rooms not knowing if their mom or or their dads are dead or alive and receiving pictures you know dr getmer's family you know receiving pictures through what whatsapp of the riddled uh tesla that uh, in the blood and everything. I mean, you can only, I can't even begin to fathom what no. his wife and children went through waiting and just wondering. And so uh, the trauma that they have endured is just, um, it, it's, it's, it's not even quantifiable uh, right. what they've gone through. But because this is a, a Moshav of children, uh, we felt it incredibly necessary to hone in on them. Yes. And uh, the antidote across the board, you ask any psychologist, the antidote for childhood trauma is playing, is getting them outside, getting them moving, and play therapy is really what we honed on. So uh, through uh, our, our friends at CityServe and Paula White Ministries, what we've, what we've come up with is we have created a sports complex center uh, that uh, is actually being built as we speak. We, we still need more money, obviously, right? but we're building pickleball courts and tennis courts and basketball courts and soccer fields in a ninja training facility for the kids. It's I mean, it, it's going to be something not only for and absorb, but the whole, the whole Eshko Valley to come, and that will be the beacon of hope for that community. When I think about this, the, the basic sports complex is about 400,000 with the pickleball, the basketball, everything. We're about 1.4 million, give or take. Yeah. We have people that right now yeah. could support this and pay for it all. I mean, and that's what my prayer is. When you bless Israel, God blesses you. It's as clear as can be. That's right. Israel's always been at the, the heart of God, yeah. the front of God, and um, when we're looking at 1,200 people, 500 children, Dr. Gebner, that not only did they go through October 7th, and I was just so tore up with your children, your wife and you as well, but just, I can't imagine. I, I just can't. And then to go through that, you're displaced as well. And then to get back in and have that kind of tenacity, because if you did not go back, we would lose that front line. It is absolutely crucial for people to understand. Maybe someone doesn't understand the Bible as much or why we stand with Israel. Geopolitical is the only democracy in the Middle East. And if we lose those borders, those front lines, you saw, we saw firsthand right. what will happen. Rape, torture, murder, burning down, destruction. Hamas has no end. We stand with Israel for many reasons. It's biblically right. It's on the right side of God. It's politically right. It is humanitarian right. It is morally right. To do nothing is to do something. And so I'm just, I'm beseeching you. I'm going to let Dr. Gepner tell about it because we've been able to help with some of the psychiatric care. We've been able to help with some of the things in rebuilding but we can't do enough. The reality is in America, and I, have, I plead to people and hope they hear my heart. If they have the means, they'll build a million dollar home. And there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong. I pray that you build everything God puts in your heart. But we can change a generation Absolutely. and the world Absolutely. with the same amount that some people are gonna pay for two or three homes or one home. Change, this is, life-changing for the entire world because if Israel goes down, it will not because God's hands on them. It will not. But if it were, and if it were to go down, anyone in the world that doesn't think, that's only going to impact what we call the bad guys, the wrong people in the Bible and the wrong people in history. You describe it very accurately. This is a crucial time, biblical time. Amen. Pastor Todd, you guys came to support us in a very darkness time of the Jewish people. Yes. Since the Holocaust, we never have something like that. And that's the first time it happened on this religious piece of land, historically. And you help bring people back home. Yeah. Thanks to your support, our 90% of our people 
back. There's many villages around us, many kibbutz and moshav that people cannot come back. But without having us stronger than how it was before October 7, we're going to lose this piece of land. Mm. And losing this piece of land will mean the next front line will maybe Tel Aviv. Yeah. And we're going to lose the country. Supporting us in the front line now for make kids play, supporting elderly, meeting in a safe environment, those things will have a crucial moment in the history of the Jewish people. We have no option but to support you. My husband and I discussed it beforehand. We know we're going to make a generous donation. We always stand with Israel. Perhaps you're watching and you could give a million 400,000 and say, Paul, I can take care of that. Or maybe you can give $140. Whatever your best is, we will build the sports complex, help Israel on the front line, restore this Moshav. And look, th this is really such a small thing we're doing because we're not there with the trauma of an October 7th, raising our children with those memories and thinking their father might be dead or little Alon saying his coach was killed and other people, their whole life disrupted. The least we can do, we've been given resources to be a blessing. I want you to go to paulawhite.org right now. You can call the number on the screen. The easiest way is to go to the website. There's a PO box, there's many different ways to give whether it's Cash App or Vimo or Donation Box, but give. Maybe it's 140000 I'm going to do everything within my power and my being to reach out to our friends, our partners, to give this footage to everyone to make a difference. Let me pray over you. Father God, I pray over every person that you would touch their heart right now and that you would put this Moshav, this village, these people that are so precious to you, you would put them in their heart. And Lord, I just pray right now that you would touch them to support with prayer, but most of all right now with their finances so that this can be built. $1.4 million is small compared to what 500 children and more will receive. So I thank you that every time we bless Israel, you bless us. And blessing doesn't always mean money. You touch our family, our children, our grandchildren, because you are a good God. So thank you. We call this done. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you so much, Dr. Gebner. Todd, thank you. Thank you.